in this video, we are going to look at what size of cable should be used for a particular circuit. In other words, what size of cable should I use for my lighting circuit? What size of cable should I use to connect my electric cooker? And so on. All right, so this is how it works. Now, listen carefully. In an electrical wiring, various loads are divided into various circuits because we want to group the loads according to their current demand or according to the amount of current that they need to work because every circuit must be protected appropriately. In a normal residential wiring, the circuits are normally divided into lighting circuits and then power circuits. And these categories are based on the amount of current that is required to power the various loads. We have other things that also require just a little amount of current to work. For instance, if you are wiring a doorbell, you use the same size of cables and protection devices just as those for the lighting circuit. And then if you are using ceiling fans, you use the same protection devices and the same size of cables just as you use for your lighting circuit. Because normally, we consider these things also as things that consume just in the range of a normal lighting circuit. Then we have power circuits. Power circuits include circuits that will supply power to appliances that normally have plugs that can be plugged into a socket. So then your fridge will be connected to your power circuit, your blender will be connected to your power circuit, your electric iron will connect to your power circuit. And so the protective device that you will need for your lighting circuit, it's different from the protective device that you will need for your socket. And then normally, in a normal residential setting, we use 2.5 millimeter squared cable for the wiring of the power circuit. And then we use 1.5 millimeter squared cable for the wiring of the lighting circuit. Same as for your fans and then your belts, if there are any. So 1.5 for lighting, 1.5 for fans, 1.5 for electric bells. In other instances, in factories, or in industries where you may need higher rated lamps and you are wiring them in numbers, you may need a bigger size of wire than just 1.5. So that if I have 100 lamps and all of them will require 0.5 amp to work properly, then you need to multiply 0.5 amps by 100, which will give you 50 amps. And so definitely, if you are wiring those 100 lamps, you can't wire all these 100 lamps in one circuit with 1.5. That is simply how it works. Okay. Now, when it comes to the power circuit, some of the things that we normally use on our socket are the fridges, the irons, the blenders, the TV, the standing fans, so on and so forth. And so it is also very important to have an idea of the particular appliances that will be used in a particular room or in a particular kitchen so that you will know the number of circuits that you provide for the number of loads that will be used. Okay, so if it's in a room where you are using your television, maybe a standing fan and then a fridge, you can use one circuit and then use 2.5 to wire that circuit. In another instance, in your kitchen, where you may be using electric cookers, depending on the rating of the electric cooker, you can use a dedicated circuit. A dedicated circuit means that you have cables drawn from your consumer unit and you are wiring it to only the socket that will be used for that particular cooker. Okay, and so you can use 2.5 millimeter squared cable or 4 millimeter squared cable depending on the rating of the cooker. If it is a dedicated circuit and the rating is not too high, you can still use 2.5. But if the rating is higher and the current that will be drawn will be more than 20 amps, then you have to use four millimeter squared cable instead of two millimeter squared cable. And so actually 
the size of cable to choose has a lot to do with the number of items you want to use in that circuit. And so, to determine the number of circuits in a particular room or in a particular area, you have to have knowledge of the equipment or the appliances that will be used in that area or that room. So, I said that cooker, depending on the size, you can use 2.5 when you have a dedicated circuit or you can use 4 mm. All right, then we also have 6 mm squared cable. 6 mm squared cable and 10 mm squared cable can also be used for cooker connections in industries where you will be using electric stoves that will require much higher electric current to work. And then in cases where you would need to connect electric motors, depending on the size, you may need 4 mm 6 mm or even 10 mm squared cable to connect those heavy equipment. All right. So actually, for normal home setting, you can use 2.5 for your sockets. And then depending on what appliances you are going to connect to them, you can connect more sockets in that same circuit. Or you may need to get a dedicated circuit for cookers or items that may be requiring much higher current to work. Now, when you connect them with other sockets and some other appliances are being used at the same time, can create a problem or can create excessive current that can melt the cable. Now, the reason why we are careful to choose the right cable size is that we want to avoid a situation whereby the load may be pulling more current through a cable that cannot conveniently carry that current to the load. And then whether you dedicate a circuit for a particular appliance or not will depend on how much current that particular appliance will require to work. Well, I believe I have said something useful in this video. And if you have really learned something new, let me know at the comment section. And please kindly do well to share this video with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe so that you get notified anytime I post a new video. Thank you very much again. See you in my next video. I'm also here to talk about how you can identify different sizes of electrical cables. And I'm going to talk about this topic in the next video. And so I will end this particular one here and continue in the video that comes after this one. Stay connected and do well to subscribe in case you are new and expect more educative videos like this. Well, if you enjoy watching my videos, share with others to also benefit. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video.